A huge part of learning, hearing, and ultimately mastering the jazz lexicon has to do with repertoire. That means you've got to know tunes. The jazz standard repertoire has a vast history, beginning with the Great American Songbook and Tin Pan Alley, Broadway tunes, popular songs, and classic jazz compositions. Building your repertoire of standard tunes can be overwhelming, to say the least. Today, I want to talk to you about what I think are some good strategies you can use to help you build your standard repertoire and know more tunes. Check this out. You got to find the tune. Find your favorite players playing the tune. Find different versions of it, studio versions, live versions, instrumental versions, vocal versions. The falling leaf. Get the tune in your head without your instrument, so you'll know how it goes. You'll know when the bridge comes, what it's supposed to sound like. You've got to hear it before you do anything else. So find a record or four. I talked about this in one of my earlier videos. The tune is the melody. It's not the chords, it's the melody. We can change the chords, we can do a reharmonization, but if we do anything to the melody, it changes the tune itself. Start with the melody. Learn how to play the melody on your instrument. If you can't play it yet, then learn how to sing it first and then learn how to play it. The great Ray Brown technique was to sing the melody while playing a bass line underneath of himself. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. You get the top and the bottom of the music. And as a bass player, that's the information we need. It helps us fill in the middle, which are the chords. Know the melody, it'll help you with the bass line. Find a piano and sit down and play the changes to the song. The piano is an essential tool, not just for jazz musicians, but musicians in general. If you go to music school, chances are you're gonna have to play some piano. And if you haven't already started, you should sit down and start trying to learn to play some basic chords and basic voicings on the instrument. Sitting down with a tune at the piano allows us to hear chord qualities and eventually extensions and cadences, how one chord leads to the next. Knowing how to play some piano will help you walk better bass lines and play better solos. My piano playing, unfortunately, is bad. I don't use fancy voicings, but I do know how to play all of my chord qualities and most of my two five ones, and I believe that's all you need. You've got to put in the time. There's no easy way around it. There's a difference between being able to play something and knowing a tune absolutely cold. Maybe you've heard the story about Thelonious Monk trying to learn a new tune and playing it for one hour straight. An hour. You can start to internalize music this way. Some of our favorite musicians, including Miles Davis and Train and Bird, they played the same compositions over and over again for years because they had internalized them to the point where they could really be free on them and just play. You've got to play tunes over and over again to really internalize them. I'm sure we can all play the blues. Every tune you know should be like that. Now, I think most of us can already do this. If I said, let's play a blues in F and uh, let's maybe move it to B flat or C or E flat, I think we could all do that because we're comfortable with that form. But let's say we take autumn leaves and we move it, say, up a major third to B minor. How long could you play it without making a mistake? 
you think you're comfortable with the tune, move the key around a little bit and see how comfortable you really are. It'll force you to listen. It'll break you out of some of the cliches we end up playing all the time. And it'll challenge your knowledge of the tune in general. Imagine if we could play Body and Soul or Giant Steps in any key. That's knowing a tune. The long and short of it is you're not fully listening if you're looking at changes. And if you're looking at the changes to the tune, you don't know it, period. While I can appreciate the vast number of resources that jazz musicians have available to them today, we have to acknowledge that when it comes to the standard repertoire, the fake books and the phone apps are merely training wheels. They will help you start to ride and get you to a certain point. But if you wanna go fast, you got to take them off at some point. Now I know what you're thinking. There are definitely times that we need charts. Let's say you're playing a, a, an original tune or a complex arrangement of something or maybe a reharm of something or something obscure. Or you're playing with a big band. Everybody needs to be on the same page. But let's say you're at a jam session and someone wants to play Whisper Not by Benny Golson. You shouldn't be up there looking at the changes on your phone. This is a tune that's been around for more than 50 years and is probably on more than 100 jazz recordings. You should know it. Remember, the art of jazz is not the art of knowing. It's the art of listening. So use your ears. Here are some tips from my personal experience that I think can help you when trying to learn tunes and learn them on the bandstand. First of all, lean on the chordal instrument, whether it's a guitar or a piano. A piano player that knows the tune can feed you the bass notes. They can feed you exactly where the chords are going. So if you listen hard and even look at their left hand, you'll often figure out where the tune is going. Secondly, ask questions. What key is the song in? What's the first chord of the song? What's the first chord of the bridge, if there is a bridge? This is all information we can obtain in like 10 seconds before the tune is counted off and can totally put you in the same neighborhood as everyone else. Take notes. If there's a tune you didn't know, write it down. If there was a part of a tune you kind of struggled with, write it down. That way you can go home and put in the work on that tune so that next time you can be ready to do it. I often advise my students to introduce themselves to a new standard about once a week. That gives you about six or seven days to really explore a tune, find great versions of it, and work on it. So make sure you make notes of what you need to work on. Learning new tunes is not that easy. You've gotta be willing to struggle through a chorus or two before you really get a foothold in it. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Trust yourself without the chart and be willing to play a wrong note in order to know what the right one is. I'd much rather struggle through two or three choruses of a tune I don't know and know it for the rest of my life than to have to need a chart every time I play it. You dig? Now the cool thing is that the more tunes you learn, the easier it becomes. Your first 10 are gonna be harder than your first 100, are gonna be harder than your first thousands. The more you add tunes to your repertoire, the more commonalities you're gonna see between tunes, and the easier it will become to hearing those tunes. For instance, the bridge to My Shining Hour is the same as the bridge to Broadway. Tunes have a lot in common, especially these American songbook tunes. But the more you add, the easier it will be to learn tunes. So keep going. You've got to listen and listen and listen. Whether it's on the bandstand, when you're trying to hear things between the group, or at home listening to great jazz recordings. There's a reason your favorite musicians build up wonderful jazz recordings of the classic albums. These tunes are played over and over again, and they give us a great point of reference on how to play the tune, how it sounds, what the form is. So listen as much 
as possible. It'll help you learn more tunes. It's better to have heard a tune and totally forgotten about it than to never have heard it at all. So go home and put on those records. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, I appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe for all original jazz bass centric content coming at you as fast as I can create it. My olive G string giveaway is still happening from my last video. So if you haven't entered, please check the greatest bass string video for a chance to win a brand new olive G string. As always, thank you for watching. Take care of yourself and please love your neighbor.